Okay, this is a really good question. So the question is coming up, you know, when you are around super needy friends and healthy boundaries are important, especially in friendships. So you have to know, and this goes with time, this goes with money, this goes across the board. And we talked about in another session. So definitely, if you didn't hear my session on healthy boundaries, please go back and listen to it and take notes there because healthy boundaries and and healthy friendships is very important. You never, ever, ever want to do something that is outside of your scope, right? So if a friend says, you know, I'm struggling financially, can you loan me $500? If you don't have the money to loan, just because you ask doesn't mean you have to give them $500. You can say, oh, wow, thank you so much for sharing that with me. Um, let's talk about this and let me, let's unpack this a little bit. Um, what is your current situation? And you can ask more questions. And at the end of the day, you might say, Hey, I can't loan you the $500, but I can help you look for a job. I can help you apply for a loan. I can help you apply for a credit QC. So it's not always that just because you ask, you have to do what that person is asking for. You have to make sure you have a healthy boundary on what you can do. And just because you have it doesn't mean you have to support in that way. You can support mentally, spiritually, physically, or emotionally. So that spiritual support is like, hey, let's let's just pray about it. Let's meditate. Let's manifest on how, and you can do a visioning together. And I learned this from Michael Bernard Beckwith of Agape Spiritual Center. So what we do within the church and also within the entire community is we vision together. So, or I can give you a hundred dollars towards it. Exactly. Um, Good, good compromise. But let me tell you something that's even more powerful is visioning and sitting with a person, whether it be a relationship or whether it be, um, you know, spiritual and either of the things we talk about spiritual wellness, but actually sitting with them and visioning. And um, Reverend Beckwith has a book called uh, Call Visioning, where he teaches like life visioning and envisioning what you want in different areas of your life. I highly recommended um, Life Visioning by um, Reverend Michael Bernard Beckwith. But basically you sit with your friend and you close your eyes and you put what's on the table, what's the challenge, and you vision seeing it happening differently. And you just sit there, breathe in meditation and divine downloads come through. They just come through. And then afterwards you talk about it, like what came up for you and they share and you share. And then together, they decide finally, ultimately what they want to do with their life. So don't forget that, that it might be a spiritual help and then well-being. You might say, hey, you know, I know that you're struggling because you're having a hard time getting to work or you might need to you might be able to drive them to work. So there are just so many things that you can do to support a friend. So please don't think it's always financial. I have been in that place um, being financially stable where I felt like. I leaned into giving financially because I was traveling and because I'm in California and that's all I felt like I could do. Right. But that's so not true, because what I started to learn is that I can get on the phone. I can vision with them. I can help them in other ways that are actually going to be more helpful in the long term. Sometimes we get into what is called handicap friendships. And what that means is that if every time you someone asks for money, you give it to them and you're not actually helping them with the problem that they're going through, it's handicapping them to find the solution. But if you actually vision with them and help them find a solution, then hopefully they won't necessarily have to keep coming back to ask you for for money. That solution might be a therapist or a doctor or, you know, because you don't know, you know, I mean, sometimes, you know, sometimes you don't, but you don't know what they're using the money for. I think whenever you give money, you have the prerogative to ask, what is this money going to? How are you using it? Or you can pay if it's a bill or something that they need, you can pay it yourself. But definitely make sure if you feel like you're in a toxic relationship where you're giving and giving and you don't, and the person is, we are all needy by nature, you know? So I always say we're needy by nature. So people are going to need your time, your efforts and your support, but it is up to us to set those healthy boundaries um, in friendship and know like where you stand and what you want to give and what you can. And that can be mentally, spiritually, physically, emotionally. It could be a phone call. It could be financial. It could just be um, spending time with them. But yeah, exactly. You don't have to just feed them the fish. You could teach them how to fish. I mean, I don't eat fish, but that's beside the point. 
So Koya, one of the questions is, if, if you were coaching uh, a couple and they were having relationship problems and condescension was a problem in that relationship over and over, how would you, what would you advise that couple to work through? Um, so it sounds like they're probably one or two of them, honestly, from the, the, the wording here, it sounds like there's, they, they, they're probably condescending each other during a conflict or through the day to day. How would you suggest they work through that? That is a great question. I'm oh, going to be honest. I am a coach. I am not a therapist. And I <laughs> highly, highly uh, suggest therapy. 100% couples therapy is something that I think is important because it's acknowledging, right? It's acknowledging both sides and acknowledging how each other feels. And there has to be practices set up to where both people get an opportunity to express and both people get an opportunity to share how certain things make them feel. And a lot of times, and I can say this because I know I had to struggle with my father with this. He would say condescending things, but he didn't feel like they were condescending, but I <laughs> felt like they were. And so it was, I literally, sometimes you have to get a third person as person, that person um, respect to let them know, like, this is why this feels not so great to this person. And it comes it, it comes to uh, mutual respect because th the thing is we all are different, right? So one thing I can say to Brendan, be like this, you know, I can say something to him. I might not be able to say that to Jenna. So it's really not about a right or wrong. It's about acknowledging another person's feelings. And if they tell you, when you say this, it hurts my feeling, they just got to stop doing it. I mean, that's my, like I said, I'm not a therapist, but at the end of the day, like, and I told my father, I mean, at the end of the day, if when you say this, it's painful to me, I'm just requesting and asking you not to say it. And it really does have to be that clear. So I do coach people. If you're in relationships, business relationships, personal relationships, where someone is doing something to harm you, I always go as, as a optimist, right? I am an optimist. I always go that they didn't intend to. They didn't intend to. I'm never like, oh, they're trying to just hurt me. They're trying to put me down. And, you know, I know some people, there are some talking people out there and there are some people who are in a, a bad place and, you know, they're, they do some things that are harmful intentionally. But I mostly feel like a lot of times, especially in loving relationships, that people do harm, but it's unintentional. So first remember that. So you have a level of compassion, but then be able to have that conversation like we talked about earlier to say, this is how this makes me feel. Do you mind? And that's creating also a healthy boundaries, which we talk a lot about in the community, creating a healthy boundary to how you would like to be talked to, how you would like to be treated. You might like your door to be open or you might like someone to say hi uh, when they come in the room and they might just go about their business, you know? So it's really about communication. So I would say number one, therapy. Number two, communication. And then number three, both sharing on both sides, not just one sided, like, how would you like to be talked to? How would you like to be talked to? Is there anything that I say that bothers you? And then going from there and having a loving conversation about what's needed in the relationship. So good, so good. This can be your day for personal growth. This can be that day you committed to and you remember and you go, that was the day I got myself a community. I got better coaches. I committed to making my life the absolute best that I could. This is that day. Make today your growth day. Click the button on this page and sign up right now.